How's it going everybody? AJ here from the Negative Supply team. We're just across the street from the office today and we wanted to make a quick video basically comparing focal lengths and compression in a portrait setting. So I'm going to be using the Negative Supply Light Meter LM1, my Nikon F5 with lenses 20 to 560 millimeters and Diego, the guy filming this video, it's also going to be basically matching. So as I'm switching from wide lenses to longer telephoto lenses, Diego is actually going to be filming with comparable focal lengths. So we're going to be getting, I guess, comparable compression of one another. So it'll be interesting to see. So the first lens I'm going to be using for this demo is my Nikkor 20 millimeter F 2.8 AIS. Um, this is a lens that I would normally use just for casual snapshots or landscapes or architecture or sometimes I actually do use this for portraits to really exaggerate faces and give things kind of a cartoon effect. Um, not something I would normally use though, not every day, so this will be an interesting one in this application. So the next lens I'm using is a Nikkor 28mm f3.5. Um, I think, yeah, this is an AIS as well. So this is not a focal length I use often. Um, I usually shoot a little bit wider or a lot longer than this. A 28 is a really popular lens for most people, but not for me. So if I was using this, it would be in similar applications to the 20, just general reportage, lifestyle, documentary work. Just to, if I'm gonna walk around with one lens, it might be something like this. Uh, but again, my one lens would usually be the 20. So we'll see how this compares. So the next lens I'm using is actually the first lens I ever got for an Icon system. It's my 50 millimeter F 1.4 AI. It's one of my few lenses that isn't an AIS. This is a good standard lens for just about any situation, and I think it's gonna do a really great job in this specific setting as well. So the next lens I'm using is my Nikkor 85 millimeter F 1.4 AIS. Uh, this is actually Saxon's, but I took it from his office right before this video. Um, I had one of these exact lenses for a few years, it's great for event photography, great for portrait work, great for available light work when you can't use a flash. 1.4 really comes in handy. Um, so I'll be excited to see how this compares in particular to the 50 I used just before. So the next lens I'm using is a Nikon 105mm f2.5 lens. Uh, this, I think, is a pre-AI. This is a much older version. It's definitely not an AIS. It has the older fluted uh, metal focusing ring. This lens up through the AIS version that was used in the 1980s and 90s and even early 2000s was found in almost every photojournalist bag uh, back in the day. People that were using Nikon F2s, F3s, F4s, and so on, even F5s and F6s. Uh, this was just an indispensable focal length for available light, uh, telephoto work for reportage, uh, portrait work, etc. Um, this is a lens that Saxon uses a lot for portraits, a lens that I've used a fair amount as well. And it's going to be comparable to the 85, but just a little bit more compression and slightly even smoother uh, background separation and depth of field. So the last lens I'm going to be using for today's demo is my Nikon 400mm f3.5 AIS ED. This is a huge and heavy lens, uh, something that would have been used for sports photography or um, long distance photojournalism work back in the 80s and 90s. When this lens was introduced, it was the fastest 400mm prime Nikon had ever made. Uh, they did go on to replace it with an f2.8 AIS ED lens, which was much larger and much heavier. Mm -hmm. 
The last lens configuration I'm gonna be using for today's demo is the same 400 millimeter F3.5 AIS ED from a moment ago, but I've also added Nikon's TC14 teleconverter, which is a 1.4X teleconverter designed specifically for uh, use with telephoto lenses. So this is effectively a 560 millimeter F5 super telephoto with razor thin depth of field and still pretty great clarity and sharpness across the plane. Um, this is something that would have been used by people doing wildlife photography, super long distance landscape work, or sports in certain isolated photojournalism applications. I'd be real interested to see how this compares with our other setups. This 400 millimeter f3.5 is the largest and heaviest lens I've ever used. And combining it with the 1.4X teleconverter, making it nearly a 600 millimeter lens, uh, makes it an exciting but incredibly challenging tool uh, to use. But it is also totally irreplaceable if you're in a situation or find yourself in a set of circumstances where the only way you can get the shot is to have a long focal length. Something like this, uh, really outside of really long distance nature photography or certain sports applications, doesn't really make a lot of sense to many people. But I've actually been using it a lot for landscapes here lately, uh, real distant mountaintops and things like that. And it's a lot of fun, but it's huge, it's heavy, there's no vibration reduction or anything like that. So what it comes down to is having really good tripod plates, a great tripod head that can support the leverage weight of something this massive and a really good set of tripod legs. Another just good tip if you do find yourself using a lens like this, you never want to mount it on a tripod from the back. You always want to mount from the tripod collar. So please make sure you do that. <laughs> or not only can it just tip forward, but sometimes the weight of these lenses or if you carry it from the handle instead of carrying it by the lens, if your camera wasn't really meant for that kind of lens, you can seriously damage a lens mount or break the camera because uh, these are just not everyday pieces of glass. So uh, an exciting tool, but a challenging one. Just keep all that in mind before you consider buying one of these. Before we let you go, I wanted to thank you for watching the video today, but also leave you with a couple of resources. If you have any questions about the scanning tools used to bring the photographs to life in this video, feel free to let us know in the comments, send us a DM on Instagram or send us an email. And uh, then if you have any questions about any of the lenses that were used, let us know in the comments. We'd be happy to uh, give you some resources on where to find a lens like one of those used today, or uh, maybe give you some alternatives if you use a different system. So until next time, shoot some film and we'll see you soon.